Now, Esther, take yes. us through massaging. Mm. How, now that you also, we talked about the importance of massaging, how mm -hmm. do we massage, especially newborn babies? Babies. Yes. So the first thing is you have to prepare yourself. Okay. You don't want to come, you harass your, because your baby sends your, your energy moods and your yes. energy. So you need to be relaxed. So the first thing we actually tell, uh, it can be moms. Moms communicate love. Our hands are small. We communicate love. Dads communicate protection. Protection. Exactly. So both can, but whoever it is, Dad, you've been in traffic, first get home, maybe take a shower, relax, you know, so that you're relaxed. Then the second thing is that you need to make sure that the room is warm. It needs to be a warm room because babies lose their heat very easily. So warm up the room. If it's up country, you can go sit in the kitchen where it's usually warm. If it's in uh, here, we're going to July. So maybe have a heater in the room. Let the room be warm. Then your baby needs to be happy enough be massaged oh so we actually ask babies permission and you know babies talk to us everyone asks me how if if I touch my baby and I lift the head like this if my baby is interested they have an open look they look at you they have eye contact they will even smile sometimes they will have eye contact if your baby does not want that touch they will turn their head they will frown yeah. they will cry so if your baby is doing that your baby is telling you I don't want to be Not massaged today. right now. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe another time. So you wait for your baby to give you that open, openness, telling you that okay, I'm 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 willing to be massaged, right. and that also teaches your baby the proper touch, touch that is that right from birth, because right now there's so many stories. Mm -mm. It's, you're teaching your baby that you should not be touched unless you, you have, have given permission. permission. Yeah, so this is something that with time, your baby actually learns this. I see it with my children that if somebody, if they don't want to be hugged, they'll say no. And that is okay because they have learned that this, I need to give permission for any kind of touch yeah. um, that we need. Then now, finally, yes. so we always start with the very small ones especially. Um, we start with the legs first because the legs um, are comfortable. They're already used to it because you're always changing the diaper. Yeah. So it's, it's a more, it's a nice way to start. So we start with the legs. And the first thing to do is to, um, you use your whole hand. So if I massaged with, with my fingers like this, that would be very painful. It's the same if I touch you like mm. this, it's very painful. Mm. But if I use my whole hand, so first I distribute my strength. And then now I can be able to actually... Is this after putting oil? Yes. So, you, of course, you need some oil. Yes. Um, whichever oil is comfortable uh, th that, that you use on your baby. So, put the oil. Um, like um, the, the, the Johnson liquid oil is very nice. So, you put it on and then, yes. So, you come up. And so, you're using your whole hand. So, that's like... There are many strokes, and this is like the Indian milking. You know, like oh. the, we call it the, the Indians and the Swedes are the, the people who massage most. So we learned most of their strokes from them. So this is Indian milking. So you would do the whole leg, yeah, and then you would like kind of help with circulation. And because you have oil, your hand will just slide up, yeah, and like you're hugging and gliding up the leg. Okay? You go hugging and gliding up the leg, and then. We need to massage the top of, 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 of the, the underneath, the, underneath the foot. Now, most babies, when they, first of all, don't put your babies on socks the entire time. So what happens if the baby is not used to being touched below, when they're learning how to walk, they stand on tiptoe. And then that delays their walking. That's what we're saying, massage really helps babies even learn how to walk faster. So. You're, you're helping that sensitivity that babies have. Because when you touch a babies, they just curl there. They're, they're very sensitive. <laughs> so you're helping that, that um, sensitivity to go. These are also pressure points. Uh, people who do acupuncture and reflexology will tell you that there are many, very, very many pressure points at the base of, of, of your baby's foot or even your own foot. Uh, for example, if your baby is very congested at, on the chest and you do little circles right underneath the toes, that seems to help the decongestion to go. So there's so many things that are happening under the foot, on top of the foot. And then we, we now go back, and now we were massaging coming up yes, outside. Yeah. Then now we go towards the heart. And that's a stimulating, call it the Swedish milking. It's a Swedish stroke, and it's a very stimulating stroke. In fact, when you do it, what you start, you're, if, 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 when you're doing like this, the baby looks very relaxed. When you do like this, the baby opens. It's a very... 
it's very stimulating to the baby. So that's the legs. So always start with the legs. And then maybe I want to mention the tummy, because tummy, babies suffer from a lot of gas, constipation. So tummy is really, really important. important. You can never know. Okay, they yeah. cry, but you don't know. They, what are you crying? They're crying about, yeah? So um, you can have the baby. My baby even has a diaper. I can tell. <laughs> You're an excellent mother. I tell you. So right from where the chest um, ends, yeah. So you would put the base of your, I mean, the, the, your hand, yeah. you use feel, the, feel free to, to, or to, to turn them. like this, yeah? yeah? So you come and you, it's like you're scooping sand, eh? So that's what you do. So you do firm pressure and you're, like you're scooping sand from the tummy. So what you're actually doing, you're making the food that's maybe stuck up here, move downwards. And if it's gas, what will happen? Because you've helped it move, because the intestines go downwards. It's gravity, eh? our bodies really love gravity. So you're helping this baby who's not able to pass this gas to help it calm down. So you do that like you're sc scooping sand. And then you can draw um, a sun, we call it a sun, just to make moms remember. So you start from, a, it's, it's a clockwise motion. So you start going towards the, the other end. So it's like you're drawing half a sun on the baby's tummy. So what you're doing is that now, first you've helped the gas calm down, yeah? The intestines are clockwise, if, right. if, if we remember our, our biology. So that gas that we've helped calm down, now we are helping it go through the intestines. And usually when you're doing that, you'll even feel your baby farting. Because what have you done? Ah, you've, you've helped. helped. You've helped. Yes. And that really helps the baby get the gas out, right. yeah? So there are so many strokes, but it's always a down one motion in a clockwise motion. How do you know that you're not doing it too, too rough, too? I always say, try it on yourself first. Ah. So because the baby is a human being, yeah. they, they're just human. So if, if I'm doing this and I'm feeling, okay, I'm comfortable, I can feel the pressure. But if I'm doing this and I'm feeling pain, then that's not the Most amount like, of pressure. Yeah. So use, use your own self. And then, so if you feel it's comfortable, but I can feel it, you need to feel the firmness. Then you will see that, yes, that's the, the right pressure. Okay. So from the stomach, is there yeah. a back? Yes. So for the back, so you can go chest, chest. We just do like strokes like that. It's like you're, you're doing a small hug at the end like that. And then the back. Um, so babies, first of all, it's important to give your baby tummy time. Tummy, tummy time, time. Yes. Tummy time is when, I'll use maybe the seat here. So tummy time is when you put your baby on their back like that. And what the little baby will do, they'll try and lift themselves right from after the cord falls off, which is at around a, a week old or so, let, they start pulling up. So what that helps, it helps them strengthen their neck muscles and their spine, and so they're able to hold up their head, so that now the, the, the neck muscles are strong enough to hold up their head. So again, you'll find by six weeks, your baby is like, ah. they're stable, the neck is stable because you've been giving them tummy time. So it's important to give them tummy time when they're awake, not when they're asleep. So we don't want our babies put to bed to sleep in their tummy because it is a dangerous position. It has been linked to what we call um, seeds, uh, which is sudden infant death in their sleep. And that is because uh, studies have shown that most babies who die in their sleep, it's in this position. Oh, no. So we don't want to put them like this when, when they're, they're asleep. asleep. It's when they're awake so that they can they can do like little press-ups. Yeah. They are really cute and they do little press-ups like yeah. that. Yeah. So tummy time is important. How long should tummy time be? Probably a minute or so oh, for yeah. the very small ones. So they one. don't struggle, they struggle too, much. too much. But as they grow older, your baby will tell you. They'll do, they'll do, then they'll get tired and they'll cry. And they're like, okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so the, for the back, um, again, you put your baby like lying across like this and then I'll use my whole hand. I don't put too much pressure because of the spine and so I'll do like a back and forth motion like that. So I put oil and I'll come and I'll do a back and forth, back and forth motion on the baby like that. Yeah. Then I'll also come and hold the bum like that oh. and then I'll come in. So it's a nice, firm, and most babies find it so relaxing, sometimes they even fall asleep. Yeah, it's really, really, and because most of them are so tired, and you find them even helping you, and they lift themselves up as you're doing that because their backs are so tired. Yeah, and the reason why we, 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 we do that, also that, like, I'll come all the way to the foot, is that, you know, your baby doesn't know that this leg belongs to them. So when you do, we call it an integration touch. We're telling that the baby that this back 
it's connected to your bum, it's connected to your legs. So your baby also starts feeling, oh, I'm just not these hands that I see, mm. yeah? I am these hands. Mm. So you massage all parts, and as you're massaging, you're also connecting, you're making these connections in your baby's brain. And that's when those babies tend to be also very social because of that touch and that integration helps them to just learn about their bodies themselves. Is there an age that you, um, you stop massaging? Um, no, what you do is modify. A two-year-old is not going to sit <laughs> and wait for you. Mm -hmm. You know, a toddler, they are busy, they have things to do. So <laughs> they're not going to sit <laughs> there to yes, and wait for you to massage them. But they might allow you to massage their hands yeah. or their legs or they fall down and you're like, oh, that's your, your you know, mm -hmm. come on, sit and massage. As you grow older, um, did you know that babies are children from the age of around five to ten, as they're growing taller and get growing pains? So they actually hurt. You hear them saying, my hand hurts or my leg hurts, and they didn't fall or anything. It's because they're, they're growing, so their joints actually hurt. So that's your chance to say, oh, those are growing things. Can I massage your leg? And they'll sit on the sofa and sit. And, and that's the time they'll talk to you. You find that that's a time, because it's so intimate with mm. you as in your child. It's a bonding session. Yeah, so your wow. child will find, oh, that boy did this to me or oh. and children nowadays are not having that that interaction with their parents because everyone is busy so when you take that five minutes to massage their legs that's what they'll tell you little secrets that are going on in their lives yeah. your teenage daughter when she gets her first period that time they don't even want anything to do with mommy but they have this period and they have cramps and you tell them okay come on sit down here let me massage your back or let me, let me put a hot compress on your tummy. Let me massage your back. She'll talk to you. She'll open up. Your son falls, your teenage son falls and, and hurts his hand. Mm. That's your time to say, okay, sit down, stand behind him and massage him. So how have you been doing? Because of the relaxation hormones, which is the same hormone that makes mothers breastfeed oxytocin, it's the love hormone. When you are massaged, it is stimulated and that helps you relax and you're more likely to talk. But Boniface, even men can do this. Yes. Yes, 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 yes they can. It's, it's both dad, we're actually saying both dads and moms. You communicate different touches, so you both need to massage. All right.